Well, people, it seems as though my course fishing has slowed right up. It's getting sort of what I call mid late autumn, and I've done really well this summer, really well in the autumn. Barbel, chub, it's good carp fishing, bits of sander, catfish. Oh my god, catfish! I seem to have got my finger on the button there. But anyway, let me come out of the wind a bit. I just, you, might, you guys must have it as well, you just want to go fishing, you just want to go fishing, it's mild, I don't enjoy the frosty weather. I'm wondering, should I dive off to Watmore for the afternoon? Well, the wife wants some weeding done, like this. Well, it's getting ready for the winter, we're gonna have to do it at some stage, but it's not been a great year for worms. So, I, I could go to the tackle shop, but you know, I just can't be bothered, to be honest, I can't be bothered to go to the tackle shop. If you think it'll cost a living, all the petrol to go in there to get, a packet of worms. I've got to dig this over, take the bait bucket, get a few worms at the same time. Now these are earthworms, so they're not all wriggly the you know, what I call the farm ones, are lively, but I somehow think they've got a sort of a smell or a taste to them that makes them quite good. There's Colin up there. Wow, he's coming down to see, <laughs> he's in my eyes and on my worm bucket, is he? So, as you can see, I've been digging, working my way around. We don't have a huge amount. Save the worms and you can use them. And I want to try, look, I want to go to Watmore just for three or four hours late afternoon when it's good and see if I can't catch something I on mean, little segments of worm. It's got to be worth a shout. See worms like this, they're just only regular earthworms. You want to break it open as well because there can always be a second one in there. So look, I'm getting the weeds out at the same time. Well, sort of. I'm getting the worms out. And there's, there's easily enough in there. I've got to go light on the ground bait, otherwise just going to get carped out. And um, I've always got this thought there might be a big perch with my name on it or what more. So, even these ones, look. Look, not very lively, but I've done okay on them. I do okay on a lot of stuff. So I try to get the best of both worlds. A bit of weeding, a bit of digging. I've got bigger worms um, there. I'll show you in a minute. See, they're these, they're these ones, like that size. They're just regular earthworms. You think not good, but I do okay with them. And the thing I do like is, yes, they're free. Wife's happy because I'm getting a little bit of digging done. See, look, there's enough here to make it worthwhile going. I just need enough for three hours. And look, look in there. If I shake them apart, there's tons of worms in there. Now, if I want to keep them, I can keep those, but I've got to, you know, get some moss. And we've had rain, that's why I'm digging. It's been so dry previously. Now I've got to go around looking for moss. These will get used before that, but anyway, there you go. I'm going to continue digging. You guys, Smith, keep an eye on those worms. They have been known to crawl out like that one. And I'll have another 30 minutes on the fork. Doing them like this, it makes me want to go beach fishing. Digging lugworm, digging ragworm. Quite satisfying. Catching all worms that you've dug yourself. The trouble is, I'll just dig up the daffodil bulbs, so I've got to be careful to them back down in again. Even these little ones, they are, to me, absolutely ideal for roach. 
which is what I'm after. I might be a little bit too early. They like it colder at Watmore, but it's got to be worth a try. To be honest, I just want to catch anything. My daughter's got a house she's, she's bought, and uh, I've got the job of stripping the carpet out, painting it, doing all the repair jobs before she moves in. So from tomorrow onwards, there won't be any fishing films I'm doing. You guys will have them because I've backed up. I've got plenty, plenty on file, so don't worry. But for me, this might be my last trip for a little bit. Easily enough for me for hook bait there. Got to get rigged up and uh, hopefully get out. At least the wife can see I've done something. And it appears I have done something. Have I done the weeding? Well, I've got enough bait to go roach fishing. Let's get the gear ready. My problem being, the barrow is in a state of repair after the explosive tyre I had, a blowout, up on the River Wye barbel fishing. So I use, you've seen it, I use this arm, you see, with the whole rod holders in it, for um, places like Watmore where they don't like you putting um, bank sticks through their wooden stagings and you can't blame them we've all done it i dare say so i figure if i get a block of wood heavy enough and i draw the right diameter hole here maybe i can just about jam those in there and then put this on top of my bait bucket that gives me my front rest and then obviously i can fish with standard rod rests at the back where i can push it in the grass because i'm only going to be float fishing i don't think i'm going to bother ledger i think i'm just going for the float so let's just fire a couple of holes and see what happens. I mean, that looks... Yeah, it might be a bit tight, who knows. Oh, switch it on, Graham. Graham, Graham, put the right plug in, mate. If it's the wrong size, I can go up one, but I'm thinking maybe if I just... I don't want to screw the thread up on these, so I'm going to go a little bit bigger. Let's knock a couple of holes out first. Just guessing how far the rods are going apart. Those DIYers, just notice how I put a rubber band around the lead here so I'd never have to lose my uh, chuck key. And being rubber, it stretches so I can move it up and down. Yeah, I think that's fine. Head big. Yeah, I can overcome the tad big bit by putting a bit of PTFE tape around that. Of course, I've got to remember to take it off when I uh, Want to put it in a standard rod rest, but that might just pack it out enough to pinch it. I'll try that. Oh, I can't get it. It's a wonder I didn't invent the aeroplane. Good old PTFE tape. Where will we be without it? That's better. A little bit more around that one guys and we're ready to get loaded and shoot off to what more and i left the garden fork in a prominent position so the wife can go around and see that oh my goodness he's done lots of work i'll let him go fishing you've got to play the game now that is going i'll show you quite simply as my front rest i just rest it like that i'm sure that's going to work and it is, of course, yes, a piece of pallet wood. So I set up at Watmore. I've got um, I've got the bolly up here because the wind's blowing this way. We just get all that, all that nasty wind in the uh, mic noise. Um, I made my rod rest just there. I put it on the bucket. It's too high, so I just put it on the old um, bite indicator box. It's about the right height because that way they just clear the... Um, end of the jetty and I've got the bait bucket at the back it's giving me about a right height so look I could just reach down and pick up 
should the float go under and I'm hoping it will uh, I've got antenna floats on there. let me show you so if you can see that it's an antenna float and it's got the uh, float adapter here so I can take that valve sleeve off that little rubber sleeve off and change floats if I want it's a broken float so you can see there that uh, if I turn it up the other way that uh, it's been snapped and I've saved it by putting valve rubber up there this is a 5BB one so it's quite heavy because there's a bit of see all the ripple out there left to right I might get wind drag I don't know which as I've, I'll come closer and closer and the bottom end I've got it's quite sharp hooks they ouch sharp oh it's gone in me as a size 12 eyed wide gate barbless I like wide gate hooks so watch that loose hook there and then um, a slightly larger one one of those grips hooks on the other side I'll put a bigger worm on there I haven't got a giant lob worms but you know I still feel with a chance of uh, perch here it's worth putting a big one out the only ground back I've got is this little bit here and the worms that you saw me digging in the garden I've got three and a half I know they look a bit sorry I know they but this and that's it that's all I've got better still they're free right let's get a bait in the water get that first fish I've got a number four shot there as you can see just up what 10 inches from this uh, this hook so we'll get a not a big worm like this I'm gonna pop it over the eye of the hook and that should stop him coming off if he does wriggle off and then just I just do this rolling technique now which is what a lot of the uh, beach matchmen do you twist and you roll the worm around you can just keep going and that keeps it on so out we go see what happens I'd be very surprised if we don't get bites fairly quickly it's on barbel drag I better be careful of that I've not bothered using a hook link people and this one I've got same setup absolutely same hook I might have to take that number four shot off as you can see the weight of the worm has actually pulled the float underneath there you want to make a point of putting the lid back on the worm oh these hooks are really sharp I think they're camasan I think they are somebody gave them to me oh, sorry for me missing fish probably this is the one I expect to catch the roach on roach on the uh, smaller one going to fish the rods pretty pretty much together this can come a lot closer like that I'm just going to get that other one in and uh, take that shot off it's got a bigger worm that pulls it down those are very uh, sensitive those antenna floats even that one look that's pulled down to setting there now I can over depth it so I know that the float will come up but I just sort of don't want to get bugged by a tiny little perch like this. If I want, I want a big perch and I'm a big roach, I don't mind. So we'll see how it goes. I'm just should be just off the bottom. I'll take that shot off there. Of course, by taking this off, it will um, sink slower as well. Like that. I'll tell you what, my rest seem to be uh, doing the job. They need to be tighter, of course they do. I'm going to come in a little bit on that one so it's on the ground bait. I think that one's just gone. This, that one. Yeah, it had the bait off. Now I purposely haven't put much feed in because I don't want to put all the feed out deep and don't get the bites. I need to be sort of on the edge because it drops away here at Watmore. I've got some little uh, four mil pellets in here as well. Thought they might get the roach going. Who knows? I have to wait till, my God, that was a throw that was on the float. Should be in the England cricket team. There 
there we go. And that's sort of what I didn't want. <laughs> I wanted to catch a fish, but I didn't want one of these. Mind you, the benefit is it is lip hooked. Back he goes. Got the worm back. That's why I think maybe fishing up in the water a bit. Might be better. Ah, the float's doing this on the way down, so I feel there might be some roach further up. That's, they're stopping the bait coming down. There it goes. Left hand one, I feel. Beautiful blue sky. Obviously not, you would consider the greatest for um, fishing. I think he's had the bait off. Had the bait off. I think I'll probably be fishing relatively close there, as you can see. I've got one just a tad like this, just asymmetric. One out and one in, just a slight difference in depth. Look like a bite. <coughs> now you see that's gone under on the left, so I think I need to take that shot off as well. The uh, sort of holding shot. Oh, here we go again. And it is a marginally bigger perch. Well, I'm hoping they're not going to be taken over. I've gone to a, a half section of worm. The other float, the other float's gone. Oh no. Small fish. Now, no point moving, they're gonna be everywhere. But what I have done is um, I bought a disgorger which you're always gonna leave your perch fishing. Let's unhook him first. Uh, chew to oblivion. Um, I bought a few pellets, just mini pellets. I might have to go to banded pellet if I'm going to get absolutely mullered by these baby perch. I think I, I might go for um, banded pellet, all that worm digging for nothing. That's nice to catch. Oh, it's gone. Missed it. I've got a feeling they're going to be a pain. Shame because sometimes you can uh, you can get some bream or tension out on worm. Obviously, carp will take worm, but they've got to find a swim first. It's only a, it's only a small bait, but here yeah, anything could take it. Update: small perch, small perch, small perch, small perch. Oh dear. Not a small perch. I get the other one out of the way down there. It's obviously painfully obvious it's a carp. Now I purposely fed really lightly, to be honest, so that I didn't get a carp. <laughs> There's no hardship obviously catching carp, but when you want um, roach, it's only a matter of time before they actually find the uh, find the ground bait, whatever you throw in. Oh, 
Well, he's going to be a while on this uh, on this match rod, people. I don't want to bust it. He's coming slowly. So perch. And obviously we might get this one, there'd be a carp. It'd be nice to get a nice roach. The nets at that special angle as you can see. That's why I've got a good fish on now because I've got it tipped slightly towards the fish at that angle. Right, let's see if we can get anywhere near this. I haven't even got out of the chair yet, to be honest. I thought it might, uh, it might ping off. But you can see the sort of sport you can get. This is garden worms, people. Just garden dug worms. I just feel they got extra sort of smell, taste, whatever to them, earthy taste that the uh, shop bought ones don't have. Maybe they're they're in that peat stuff or whatever they put them in the shop once, and and they they sort of scoured all the um, natural smell, smells off it. These Wagner floats are very good. It's not a particularly big fish, to be honest, but obviously on a match rod, this goes pretty well. That's why I didn't go down to light, uh, like two and a half pound bottom or anything for the roach. I think, no, not quite. Now he's about four pounds. You can see the depth on fishing there, five feet maybe, four feet, four feet six. He's in. There we go. Yeah, that's a mirror comp. Not the world's greatest mouth. He's not going to win lipstick of the year, but it's still nice to catch. Ah, hope that there might be some bigger fish. Net gets one flip, net gets faced, it's got to go slightly. That's it, slightly tilted towards the uh, fish. <coughs> Cloud it up again. I hope it's not going to go to rain as you can see. I'll just show you the size of oh worm. It is look. Small piece of worm, isn't it? But these hooks are very good. Dave Roberts at was Berry Hill Fisheries used to, as used to be in the tackle shop there. He said, try these hooks, Graham. They're really worth having for sharp. He's, you, you can always learn off the matchman. That is the truth of it. They're very good at uh, locating either good gear. All I'm doing is throwing a pinch every now and then because I, I didn't want to get plagued out with fish other than roach, which I'm after. Well, here's the update. I've had about 25, 20, 25 perch. I'm sort of reasonable getting towards half pound. No more uh, carp, no tench, no bream. Um, wind's coming up. It's clouded up a bit. It's probably not a bad thing for fishing. Um, and I've gone deeper and deeper with the uh, floats because with the wind coming, it creates a sort of circulatory effect and a little bit of drag to the left, even though it's smooth in close. If I go out further, I get a little bit of uh, suction going that way. So a good bit of good bit of sport really. It's a, you know, it's a lot of perch. If you want some perch, small bits of worm fished on the inside, and you've still got the chance of a carp there. So it'd be nice to catch a bream or something a bit different. But um, 
and he was walking around the owner just telling me over in the corner that uh, they've had some big perch and he's three pounds apparently so if I do get a chance to come again um, maybe I'll go with some lob worms, bigger worms, bigger hooks and just sit there maybe ledgering on the bottom I don't know uh, and give it a go you can see look with this, I'm dragging even though I'm trying to keep a shot on the bottom I'm, the left hand foot's actually dragging that way I will still get small perch because they're probably all over it is that time of year where you're going to get changes you know it's all going to start changing maybe the roach will come on maggots um, I'm kind of surprised I haven't had roach on those small bits of worm and there, as the afternoon is going on, I'm getting bigger and bigger bits of worm out. I've also tried, which you people must know I've tried before, is making a paste out of the ground bait. That can be pretty good as well. So I've got the ground bait and I just sit there, get your hands a little bit wet if you want to make it a little bit softer. And then you can just work away kneading it like this. And I can put a pinch of that on the hook as well. Not as well as a worm, but as an alternate bait. Certainly, there's enough, there's enough worms there to see me out this afternoon. Alright, finally got a different species hooked up people on the, uh, on the float and this is on a piece of ground bait paste. There we go, that's perch, carp and it looks like a bream. There we go. Not a big fish. But just by changing, I'm amazed he didn't take um, worm, to be honest. He just took a piece of ground bait. But there you go, at least, at least it's a different species. Nice little bream there. And they could move in as a shoalfish. I'll put a little bit more feed in. So I think the reason I've uh, picked that bream up is because when you're feeding and you're feeding say for roach up in the water eventually that ground bait a lot of it it's not intercepted will get down to the lake bed but if it's on the lake bed if you keep going deeper and deeper if you're not getting fish up here then obviously you'll get fish on the bottom so you can be feeding say top to mid water and you catch a few fish and then it goes dead well if it goes dead I nearly always go deeper because that's where the bait's going to go right down to the lake bed so there could be fish down there. You're going to carry those fish down like this to the lake bed. So I'm pretty sure that's where there was because you wouldn't expect to catch bream near the surface. So there might be another one coming in a minute. Fingers crossed that or even a carp moves in. But I'll very shortly go into the larger size uh, worms I've got there and just sit out for the last couple of hours. So there you go. It's worth digging those worms because digging the worms actually made me come fishing. I know I caught on the ground bait, but if I hadn't dug the worms, I wouldn't come and catch all the perch, wouldn't have had the carp, and because I'm here, wouldn't have made ground bait paste, hook bait, possibly not had the bream. And the net is at the lucky angle. Winds and all in, I have to say. I don't think there's any rain in it. But that's why I've got this up, trying to keep it off the microphone mild for the time of year still getting pretty well perch after perch and they are very very tubby some of them look look at the belly on this little chap there he's obviously eating some either bait or well, he's eating my worm he's got quite a belly on that little perch there a bit chewed at the back and sometimes that can be another perch that's had a go at him because that does happen, they will eat each other big ones. I've sort of had enough perch at the moment. Been missing a few bites. This one looks a bit bigger. It's not a car, but it might be. I've got a feeling it might be a roach. No, it's another perch. Ooh, just a swinger. Just a swinger. They are, in fact, if you look at that, getting marginally bigger. Yeah, they're getting a little bit bigger there. Well, I switched over to ground bait and I feel that's a bream coming in. That was interesting. It's the last of the ground bait going in. 
Let me come. He's in. Gone very quiet on the worms. A bit bigger that bream. That's a bit bigger. But listen, fish is a fish. We're getting there. Our sun's going down. I feel there could be a, another fish on the way. Little piece of ground bait paste. Don't neglect it. So Andy was telling me that um, the silver, as they call them, the silverfish, roach and bream and that, they should actually, as the weather gets colder, start to come on now, as the carp will go off the feed and go a bit quieter. So they've got those for the matches. But of course, if you don't mind catching uh, bream and roach and stuff like that, you can just go to maggot, sweet corn and other baits, or even this ground bait paste, and uh, still have a bit of sport there like I'm getting. So it's very interesting that uh, as soon as I put worm on perch, as soon as I put ground bait on, or ground bait paste, um, bream. That's the total left of my ground bait. And that's what I've made a little paste ball of there. I'm just taking pinches off of that. I'm still kind of surprised that no roach have uh, taken that ground bait paste. And I've got to say I'm getting cold now, so normally fish till dusk. I don't think I am tonight. It's an age thing. It's the thought of the log burner and a glass of red wine. And I can sit on the edit nice and warm. I'm editing it in nice and warm. I'm getting nibbles, I'm getting little bites, so little bites like this dipping on the uh, on the ground bait paste now. I think I've got another bream on here, people. Yep. Let's get that one out of the way. Not the world's greatest fighters, but they are something to catch. I do this one in the net. Just nick there. And that was on a piece of worm that time. I think I've got about 10 minutes, 15 minutes left. Then I'll be frozen. Hypothermia will be setting in. That, folks, is it, the last of the ground bait. I'm coming closer and closer in. That's it, there is no more. It's that time again, people. That's the uh, last of the bigger worms. And he's off. <laughs> what can I say that's polite? Well, we've got another one on. It's a carp this time, guys. It's Linda the Lips again. <laughs> well, that's a carp, it's not the greatest looker, but listen, ground bait pace, it switched from the worms to the ground bait pace, seems to have done the trick. Well, there you go, people. A few fish, scratched something out, I've done the gardening. I've also 
got a few worms out of it and I got a few fish that's what it boils down to I've got to pack up I normally fish this time this is the peak time to fish I'm just getting cold I've packed I packed most of my gear away as usual rods are just sat there all I'm getting now is small perch on the worms there's one there now I feel tiny piece of worm And I'm kind of surprised I haven't had one brooch at all, even on little bits of worm like that. So, packing up time, it's back to the tackle shack or the office. The tackle shack's got that nice G stove in it. The office has got central heating. Hmm, difficult choice. Don't go away, we'll find something else to talk about. Well, I know it wasn't the greatest session, but there is a certain satisfaction from digging those worms out of your own garden taking them down like Billy Basic, putting them on the hook and catching some fish. Anyway, I shall do that again, no doubt, before the ground freezes and I can't get the worms. Now, I mentioned before in the film about utilising some 20,000 pictures I've had from my, God, 50 years of writing for magazines and books and stuff like that uh, for the press, travelling all over the world. Um, so, I'm going to make a slide box, I said. And then you sort of forget. But this time, I forced myself out there into the Totally Awesome Workshop to make a slide box. Sit back and enjoy. Well, when I 
So, wow, thunderstorm, guys. That shook the house. Well, I was going to say, I've turned my computer off because there's a big thunderstorm out there. Well, I was going to say, before this storm come, which has come out sort of nowhere, I did actually uh, get out of the workshop and I've made my light box that I mentioned last time in one of the sort of um, theory time end of bit of everything so I talk about after a fishing film. So I made this one and um, what I thought rather than electric I was going to have it hardwired put it in the plug over there and I thought it might be too bright for me here so I stripped this, um, this sealant you know off of the uh, the film that they put over there, stripped it off. I've made a hole at the back there, and then I've got four of these cheapo L cheapo lights, which I can also put on a board and change. And I've used, wait for this, the leftover piece of perspex there, and it fits in there, so I can slide it in there. All my 20 odd thousand slides I've got are like this, so holding them up against a the light like this really doesn't do your neck too much good. So this might be better because I could do it sat down. All I do is this. These, whatever they are, cheapo touch lights take um, AAA batteries, three in each, and I figure that's cheaper going to Poundland buying a pack of batteries than it is me running the electric. So I can go on, on, he hopes. Oh, don't be like that. And it's on this plastic tray which I can then push inside here, like that, slide it in and out, and I can also move it around. Well, the storms are raging around out there. So I might change it, I might find brighter lights, but this as you can see, I can then put this and move it around and I can look out different pictures. Um, yeah, I might get a strip light, but this is the way I'm trying to try and work it at the moment. So let me zoom in on this and I'll show you what I will be looking at when I'm looking for a slide to scan into the computer. So this one obviously got loads of different sharp ones, bonnet head sharks, which were a flat species over in the Florida Keys. So I can look here, if I held it over to say the brightest light like that, you'll see when I slide it over, hopefully, there, I can actually see, you know, which, which, which pictures I want. 
just blurs out there. There we go. Now you can see that that slide looks like the bonnet head shark I caught on a fly over in the Florida Keys. Comes out nice and sharp. Let's have a look at another one. Oh, let's embarrass Mike while we're at it. Yeah, there you go. There's Mike, aged about eight, with a bonnet head shark. Hard to believe where the years have gone, and the good looking guy on the left is obviously moi, with not grey hair. So you can see I've got the option of doing different um, ways of checking out slides. I can put the whole sheet on here and just scan them like this and go through each one quickly. <gasps> Big thunder and lightning. I've turned the computer off, guys, just in case it fries 40 films I got backed up. So bear with me, and in one of the programs, I will be scanning some of these off and we'll have a good old chit chat about uh, you know, some of the different species over the years and indeed different venues. So I'm a great bother saying I'm going to do these things. I've got a load of slides over there to talk about all the different tagging that I've done, and um, they've been there. Since last winter, that's terrible. So I have no shortage of these sheets with all the slides in. So this will give me something to play with. So I say, I might turn around and change this, because look, I could just put it out like that with the lights. I might find they're not bright enough. I might want different lights. But at the moment, that's going to work. Right, let's move on to the next project. Well, I just couldn't resist having a go with the slide scanner. Once I got the light box and I looked at those old slides, it was like going back in time. Anyway, here's a few pictures to give you some sort of idea what we can do using that slide scanner. One of the many trips we used to go around the world. This place is British Columbia. forward to getting on the old slide scanning machine and the actual slide scanner and do some more transfers for you. Hopefully it'll give me a project through the winter. Thanks for watching this show. We'll see you in the next one. Hit the subscribe button. TA Fishing, TA Outdoors and we'll see you in the next programme.